Okay, so we're going to take a break from percentages. We've done quite a lot of work on percentages um, over the last few weeks. So we're going to have a nice little standalone geometry uh, topic today on similar shapes. Similar shapes will crop up in the middle of an intermediate tier paper. It's um, generally grade C sort of work. And it builds on the work that we were doing uh, with transformations before Christmas. So when we're looking at transformations, if you remember, we were looking at enlargements, rotations, reflections, translations. Well, if we focus on the enlargement part of this, um, and when we were doing that, what I was saying was when you enlarge a shape, each side in the enlargement was a multiple so many times bigger or smaller um, to a given scale factor. And this was the sort of question that we were looking at. So, enlarge the shape shown on the grid below by a scale factor of 2 using A as the center of enlargement. So, because it's given on a grid, what we do is we work out how far we travel in the horizontal and vertical direction to go from A, which is the center, to the shape, to each corner or vertex on the shape. So, to move from A to that point, I'm moving horizontally 3 squares and up one. So my enlargement is going to be twice that size. So rather than moving three one, I'm going to be doubling that. So I'm going to be moving six two. So I'm going to cross six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and up two. So that point there becomes that point there. For this corner, I'm going across horizontally two and down one. So in the enlargement, I'm going to double that movement. So I'm going to go horizontally four, one, two, three, four, and down two, which takes me to that point. With that vertex there, which I put a sort of plus cross on, I'm moving horizontally one, two, three, and vertically one, two, three. So on the enlargement of scale factor two, I double that. So I'm going to go across six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the final point, I've got a triangle on. To get from A to the triangle, I'm moving one, two, three, four, horizontally four, down one. So that's going to be horizontally eight, down two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. And you wouldn't have to do those various little shapes or in an exam. You just want to put a point there and join them up. I just do it that way, just so you can see which different point I'm starting with and where it ends up. So that was work that we were looking at before Christmas on enlargement. The enlargement is exactly twice the size of the original. Every side and its corresponding side has got a scale factor of 2. Now what we're going to be doing today with similarity is that in reverse. Um, where you have an enlargement like that, those shapes are known to be mathematically similar. So if you see the word similar on a maths paper, what they're getting you to trigger is, oh, we've got an enlargement. We've got a common scale factor. And if I can work out what that scale factor is, I can use that to find missing lengths on my shapes. So let's see what these questions look like. So EG1. Quadrilateral P is mathematically similar, so there's my trigger, to quadrilateral Q. So that means there's a common scale factor between the two shapes. So in order to work out that scale factor, I need to find a pair of sides that correspond in each shape that I know. Okay, so for example, that 18 in shape P is corresponding to that shape there. You can see by the shape of the quadrilateral that that side corresponds to that side. That side corresponds to that side. 
So I'm looking for a pair of corresponding sides that um, I know both of. And that, in this case, is those two. So the first thing I need to do is work out what the scale factor is. So the scale factor, I want to find out how many times bigger this shape is to this shape. So to find the scale factor, I find my corresponding sides and then do the larger one divided by the smaller one. So 15 divided by 12. Where's my calculator? 1.25. So that means that every side in Q is 1.25 bigger than the corresponding side in P. So if I'm going to go from the smaller shape to the larger shape, I'm going to take every side and multiply it by that scale factor. If I need to go in the other direction, if I need to take the smaller, sorry, the larger shape and reduce it down, the scale factor is the same, but I'm going to be doing the opposite of multiplying by 1.25, which is dividing by 1.25. So I find the scale factor by spotting my corresponding sides that I know, and then dividing the larger one by the smaller one. So that's telling me that the scale factor between these two is 1.25. That means that every side in Q is 1.25 times bigger than in P. So in order to work out what um, X is, X is larger than 18, so it's going to be 1.25 times bigger than its corresponding side in that. So to find X, X is going to be 18, the smaller side, times 1.25, which is 22.5 centimetres. I then need to find out what Y is. So I'm looking for the corresponding side in Q. And because this time I'm shrinking it, it's going from larger to smaller, I'm going to be dividing. So I'm going to do 20 divided by 1.25. So y is 16 centimetres. So from a revision point of view, this is quick and easy learning. The trigger is you're looking for the word similar. Right, once you're finding similar, step one, what's the scale factor? Find your corresponding sides, largest divided by smallest, gives you your multiplying factor. If you're taking a side in the smaller, to work out a bigger side, you're going to multiply it by that value. If you're taking a larger side to reduce it down, you divide by that. The shapes you've given could be three-dimensional. So in this example, diagram shows two cylinders, A and B. So cylinder A has a height of 1.6 and a radius of 0.56. Cylinder B is mathematically similar Ooh, I'm looking for a scale factor to cylinder A. The height of cylinder B is 0 0.6. Work out the radius of cylinder B. So there's my radius that I've got to work out. I'm going to be shrinking, so I'm going to need to divide by my scale factor. My scale factor... So what corresponding sides do I know? I've got the height of both. So my scale factor is going to be 1.6 divided by 0 0.6. Right, now that is a um, long string of decimals. Um, what you don't want to do is to round that off. Okay, so it's 2.66666. I'm going to leave it as a fraction so that I'm not going to lose the accuracy.
okay so don't round it off so the scale factor is 8 over 3 then my height sorry my radius is going to be so to go from larger to that I've got times by 8.3 so going the other way if I'm shrinking I'm going to divide by 8 over 3 so R is the smaller of the two so I've got to do 0 0.56 divided by 8 over 3 so on my calculator I got 0 0.56 divided by now 8 over 3 was my previous answer so I could press ants but just in case you're not sure about that let's put it in as a fraction so 8 on top 3 underneath equals 0 0.21 okay so if I just make a little note around he up here don't round looks like found Okay, don't round off the scale factor. That's important. Otherwise, you'll end up with um, a wrong answer at the end. So same method as the previous one. As soon as you see mathematically similar, my scale factor. To find the scale factor, I need a pair of corresponding sides. Um, you generally do the biggest divided by the smallest. In this case, it rounded off to be something nasty. So I've kept it as a fraction. That means that to go from the small to the big, I have to multiply that. But in this case, I need to find the smaller of the two. So I'm going to divide 0.56, which I know corresponds to my unknown, by the 8.3. Sometimes they don't give you a diagram. And this one's in the context too. So Jade needs a new passport photograph. Passport photograph must be 45 millimeters high by 35 millimeters wide. Jade has a, there's the trigger, mathematically similar photograph that she could reduce in size to use as her new passport photograph. The height of this photograph is nine centimeters. Calculate the width of this photograph. Okay, so what have we got? We've got one which is 45 millimeters high by 35 millimeters wide and I've got a mathematically similar one which is nine centimeters high now they have to be in the same units so nine centimeters is going to be need to be written in millimeters now a centimeter is 10 millimeters so 9 centimeters will be 90 millimeters so if that's 45 millimeters this is 90 millimeters and what I want to find is the width so the first thing is I've got two heights the passport photograph is 45 millimeters the one I've got is 90 so I can work my scale factor out from that So that'll be 90 divided by 45, which is 2. So everything is twice as big. So the width of this photograph will be twice the size of the smaller photograph. So the width of the larger photograph is 70 millimeters. So if they don't give you a diagram, draw your own one. It makes life easier. When calculating the scale factor, it is important that you are using corresponding sides. So if they want to be really horrible, they can move the triangles or the shapes around. So you can't st straight away figure out what the corresponding sides are. This one's not too bad. 
Triangles ABC and PQR are similar. So there's my trigger. I need to be finding a scale factor. Now the way that they show the angles here is that you've got um, one little curve there and one little curve there. So that angle there and that angle there are the same. And then this one indicates two and that one's two. So those must be the same as well. So when you are matching up, you want to make sure that, and sometimes it helps to draw these to make sure that you can see it clearly. So I've ABC, that one, and that one, 5.6, 8.4. And then I'll spin this around so it stands next to it. This is PQR and I'm making them line up so that they correspond. So I know PR is 5.88 and QR is 2.24. So make sure that you've got your triangles orientated the same way. Okay, I know they're similar. So, um, and I want to work out PQ and BC. So I need PQ is that one and BC is that one. So those are the two that I need to find. So I'm looking for a corresponding pair. The corresponding pair are here. Now I've stupidly drawn that one smaller than that one. It doesn't matter, it's the numbers that we're interested in. So this is larger than that. So the scale factor and the corresponding pair is 8.4 divided by 5.88 which is uh, again not a nice number so I'm going to leave it as a decimal uh, sorry a fraction so that I don't lose any values So I'm going from the smaller to the larger. So even though I've stupidly drawn these, it's actually going that way. To get the 8.4, I'm going to take the 5.88 and multiply it by 10.7. So to get BC, I've got to take the 2.24 and multiply it by 10 over 7. So BC is 2.24 multiplied by 10 over 7. So I'm taking the smaller side and then multiplying it to get the bigger side. So 2.24 times 10 over 7 equals 3.2 centimeters. So BC, I worked out, is 3.2. Now, to get PQ, I'm going from the bigger to the smaller. So to go the other way around, I've got to divide by 10 over 7. So PQ is the bigger side, 5.6, because that's the one that corresponds, divided by 10 over 7. So 5.6 divided by fraction button, 10 over 7, 3.92. So that's it. Spotting the word similar, or mathematically similar, triggers off a scale factor. You find the scale factor by finding the corresponding sides that match up in each shape and divide the bigger by the smallest. Then how to use that scale factor if you're going from the smaller side to work out a larger you'd multiply by the scale factor. If you're going from a larger side to work out the smaller side you would divide by the scale factor. Okay so hopefully um, you followed those questions all right. I'm sorry if 
my stupidity there uh, messed you up with the wrong sized triangles. So ABC is a larger triangle than that one. Look at the numbers, not the size. What they will almost always say in each of these questions is diagrams are not drawn to scale. You can't measure them. That one was not drawn to scale. That one not accurately drawn. That one not accurately drawn. So you can't measure them. Okay, so there are uh, six or seven questions, I think, on the slides for you to have a go at. What would be really good is if you can tell me what your scale factor is, even if you can't use, show me what the divide button is. So if you could do the three lines, scale factor, side, side, if there's more than one, um, then that would be really good. Because when I'm marking your work, then it's easy to see if you're working the scale factors out correctly. I'll be live online if you need me. Good luck.